Heel Steven wants you all to know that he hopes you all enjoy this Monday Night Raw review from April 29, 2019. Heel Steven also hopes that if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Also, while you're at it, Heel Steven also hopes that you all hit that like button down below because they'll put a big happy face on Heel Steven. Also, Heel Steven wants you guys to know that if you're not yet, follow him on Twitter at Heel Steven, where Heel Steven talks about all the stuff that happened on Monday Night Raw and other stuff in general. Heel Steven also welcomes your feedback of this video, whether it be in the comment threads of Heel Steven's video that you're currently watching right now, or if not, on the Twitter at Heel Steven, where he welcomes your following, if you will. Heel Steven also wants you guys to know that there's other things he could be doing right now, but instead he is choosing to talk about Monday Night Raw. Heel Steven right now could be playing FIFA 19 on PS4. Heel Steven can also, right now, being that Heel Steven came out of work an hour ago, he could be asleep right now. But instead, Heel Steven is choosing to talk about Monday Night Raw. Did you realize how stupid that sounded? And that's just one of many things that happened on last night's show. And it's, I'm going to just be real with you guys. Last night, I turned the show off halfway. I couldn't take it. Also, the fact that I had work early in the morning. And I'm not going to sit there till 11 p.m. And just get three hours of sleep. Fuck that. Just fuck it. At this point in Juncture, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only YouTuber or podcaster that does this as well. I'll catch the whatever I missed on YouTube. And that's it. Whatever. It's like I watched the fucking show in general. But anyway, dorks, I hope that, you know, you enjoyed Raw if you've watched it or not. I hope that you are excited for money in the bank. You know, when I was a child, I'm going to just say this right now. See, when I was a child growing up, a young heel Steven, right? Watching wrestling and watching, you know, whenever they were setting up a tournament or a multi-person ladder match, right? At WrestleMania back in the day before they had a fucking pay-per-view of the fucking event. You'd have to qualify, to be part of said tournament or, or said match or run a gauntlet back in the day. Remember, remember those remember those days? The beat the clock challenges or running the fucking gauntlet? Remember those? Right? Those were the good old days. Oh my god. My childhood. WWE is fucking ruining my childhood day by day. But now, in 2019, oh my god, the lazy era, holy shit, instead of having people qualify in competitive matches, a series of matches, if you will, let's have these fuckers just, let's give them a fucking pass, here you go, you want in the match, you're in the match, you want in the match, you want to be part of Money in the Bank, you're part of Money in the Bank, hey you, you ain't doing shit this whole fucking year, but you want to be part of Money in the Bank, here you go, hey Dana, I know you're about to go for your third fucking plane in catering, and you, we haven't done shit with you, but yeah, you can't get a fucking thousand retweets on Twitter on a fucking verified account, but fucking hell, Let's put you in the money in the bank ladder, Matt, because fuck it, why not? Laziness. Laziness, laziness, laziness. And I'm sorry, it's not going to fucking change. And this is why sometimes, and I don't want to come off like that person. I don't want to be that fucking person, you know, that says, oh my God, I can't wait for this. Nah, because listen, I said, my, I said what I said about AEW already. But sometimes it's shit like this, when you watch Raw's like last night, where it makes me appreciate that there's another company coming up. It could be that alternative that everyone will fucking wants. But goddamn, last night's Raw was fucking lazy. And more stupidity after stupidity. And everyone in their fucking mother all of a sudden want to be a fucking hashtag activist. You know what I saw trending on Twitter last night when, when I found, when the, when, the, when the news came out that Dana Brooke was going to take part of fucking money in the bank? The women's money in the bank? Oh, where's Ruby Riot? Hashtag Ruby in the bank. Ruby in the fucking bank. Hashtag Ruby in the bank. I'm sorry for all you hashtag activists out there. Some of you know who you are. I call some of you dorks out on Twitter. Be original with your shit. 
be fucking original. I'm just saying, you know, if Fowler do a hashtag, you know, because think about this, right? This is the same guy that at WrestleMania weekend, I did a hashtag called Dork Mania. That's unique. For money in the bank, well, why don't we just call this shit Dork Money? Hashtag Dork Money. Let's get that fucking trending, people. Hashtag Dork Money. Or if you're Ruby Riot, for all the Ruby, Ruby Riot, for all the fucking Ruby Riot diehards out there, how about hashtag Ruby Money? I'm just saying. But the point of the matter is, listen, doesn't fucking matter what hashtag you fucking put, what fucking, how hard do you go on Twitter and complain and bitch and moan? It's not going to change anything. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not. So quit fucking being a fucking hashtag activist, you fucking dorks. And again, when I call people dorks, I'm going to say this right now because I understand that the internet wrestling community has become a pussy field. Everyone's a fucking pussy all of a sudden. I mean that with love. When I call someone a dork, I mean that shit with love. Don't take it fucking serious. Just saying. Anyway, anyway, let's get this. Let's go over this raw review. And again, guys, I welcome your feedback. I welcome your thoughts. What I felt was a lazy, lazy episode of Raw. Probably one of the most lazy Raws of the year. Hands fucking down. Let me ask you this question. Are you excited for Money in the Bank? Did this Raw excite you at all? And by the way, we're closing the show with a Money in the Bank contract signing between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. Because goddamn it, we have not seen that before. And this is shit that, this, this, again, this is that detail for me at least. Whatever happened to, hey, we make the match official, but damn, we gotta fucking sign a contract? No, the match is already official. What's there to sign? It's not like in boxing or MMA. Oh my god, uh, fucking Canelo Alvarez is fighting Danny Jacobs, right? This coming Saturday? The fight's is Saturday. Oh my god, on Friday, they're gonna sign the contract. No, you don't see that shit. Only in fucking pro wrestling. I think it's stupid. It's It sucks. It's shit. It's fucking shit. The show opened up with Alexa Bliss. By the way, the Raw was live from Kentucky. Somewhere in fucking Kentucky. The crowd sucked. That's all you gotta know about that, too. The show up with Alexa Bliss announcing the Money in the Bank ladder match entrance for the men. The fucking men. And again, whatever happened to qualifying in in tournament, in, in matches, to be part of this said match? Again, WWE is fucking ruining my childhood. Well, let me guess. On SmackDown Live, are they going to qualify for matches now all of a sudden? Is that what's going to happen? Or are, are we going to get, again, everyone with a fucking free pass and shit? So, out came Braun Strowman, who won Lashes Money in the Bank, and then followed by a Ricochet. Newcomer. Okay. And then out came Baron Corbin, who also lost his opportunity when he went to cash in two years ago. Don't remind me. And then out came what I think is the favorite, Drew McIntyre. Now, I'm seeing this, all four guys in the ring. Let's point the obvious. Ricochet looks small as shit compared to all these guys. And I got love for Ricochet. But let's tell it like it is. The guy looks out of place. Height-wise, they're all talking. Everyone's shutting up Baron Corbin. And they're all talking back and forth. Opportunities, shit like that. And we get an improv to tag team match play because fuck it, why not? Uh, fucking Baron Corbin and Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman and Ricochet. And you know what's funny too? Like they're shutting up Corbin, but wasn't Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin at one time in cahoots? Like it's, it's so fucking funny to me. It's it's so fucking funny. Um, but anyway, that was just that. It was just that they had a tag team match. It felt long as shit. I'm going to tell you that right now. It took most of the first hour of Raw. And listen, I'm all fine with this, but the same old usual shtick where, oh my God, McIntyre's about to have the win. He's about to hit the Claymore kick. It's funny because he hits the Claymore kick somewhere in this match on the outside. I, I want to say it's on Braun Strowman. And he looks like he hurt himself. I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but it looked like the fucker hurt himself. But at the end of the, but again, we go near the end of the match. 
McIntyre about to hit the freaking uh, Claymore kick. I want to say on uh, yeah again on Braun Strowman and Baron Corbin hit the blind tag, and this upsets McIntyre and hits him with the Claymore and leaves him hanging. So then Braun hits the power slam, and then Ricochet did the, the fucking fourth the, the fucking shooting star press for the one two three. So there you go with that. Again, is that. Detail. I'm gonna say it again. I hate being repetitive with this shit, but I'm pretty sure I'm not the only YouTuber. I'm not the only podcaster that feel this way. Whatever happened to qualifying for fucking matches? It's like everyone gets a fucking handout and shit. It's so stupid. It's so ridiculous. And do you think that was it, bruh? We're not, we're just getting started with this show. We're just getting started with this shit. I swear to God, this show was the most laziest clusterfuck of a show I've seen this year alone on Monday Night Raw. And then we get a tag team match. We get the Usos, who are now singing their theme song on the way to the ring. I want to know who in the fuck and their mother thought this was a fucking bright idea. Hey, guys, let's have them... You know, yeah, we know they are in the Uso Penitentiary down since day one-ish. What if they rap their theme song? What if we give them mics and let them sing? You know, our truth and Carmella be singing on SmackDown Live, duh. Why not have, you know, the Uso do the same thing? <laughs> I, 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 I want to know whose idea was this? Was it Dana Warrior's idea? Was it Abyss's idea? Was it Sanjay Dutt's idea? I seriously want to know who is the mother flower. Who's the dork? I thought this was a fucking good idea. It came out cringy. They came out of rhythm. It is just, nah, nah, bro. Fucking lip sync. I don't give a shit, but nah, bro. It's like they come to Raw. It's like everyone comes to Raw and we got to change something all of a sudden. I hate that. I fucking do. And they faced the Good Brothers. Oh, by the way, did you guys know that the Good Brothers were not part of Monday Night Raw? I did not even know that. They didn't even tell you it. Oh, my God. The Superstar shakeup happened. And, oh, my God. We're getting these random changes out of fucking nowhere. My only question now is, what tag team do you have on SmackDown Live? Heavy Machinery? The, 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 the colons who you barely see on TV? And I guess now, who are the SmackDown tag team? The, the Hardys are about to drop the belt because Jeff is injured and shit? What teams do you have on SmackDown right now? I, I seriously, the New Day? I I don't fucking know, but still, it's so sad. It's sad. It really, really is. So the Good Brothers, they have the match. And you know what? They had some offense at the beginning. And then it was all said and done. Like every single Uso match, the Usos picked up the W. They had a double super kick. And then a top rope splash on Gallows. Now, I'll say this. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. How Raw ended tonight. Well, last night. I'm sorry. I'm used to doing these shows literally once Raw ends. But it is what it is. That Carl Anderson and Gallows are now on Raw. With AJ Styles. Unless they decide to reform the club. Which, honestly, I wouldn't mind. Because I think right now, again... Gallows and Anderson, let's be real about it. They're not going to do shit with these guys. They're not. They're not. What better way to use these guys and make the use out of them is, hey, put them back with AJ Styles. Even though they should have done with Finn Balor because Finn Balor's on, over there right now on, on SmackDown Live. But they'll never do that. Because Balor Club is for everyone, yeah? So there was that. And after the match, oh, it gets worse. It gets worse from here, bro. Believe you me, it gets fucking worse from here. Yeah, the Usos, they're talking about, they're going to show everyone something that they've never seen before. And you think, oh my God, we got to come out with new, I don't know, a new theme song or something different. I don't fucking know. And then they talk about the revival, a team they never faced, whatever. And they show a video, a video that was recorded probably early in the day or so. And it's the Usos recording the members of the revival, Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson, is literally Dash Wilder shaving Scott Dawson's back in the shower. And they're making fun of them. 
and the revival come out and talk about, hey, it's okay, man. They're, they're real men. They're real fucking men. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with what they did. I'm sorry. If I'm the revival and WWE's offering you a $500,000 deal, whatever the fuck it may be, for five years or so, and you're doing this shit, run, bro. Run, bro, run. Get the fuck out of there. I'm just saying. It's so stupid. It makes zero sense. I mean, it's and honestly not. It's sad, bro. It's fucking sad what they're doing with the revival right now. And here's the thing about it. I used to not like the revival growing when I when they started. I used to not like them. And then they won me over. I, I, I told the story before. They won me over as time went on. But god damn, bro. It, it's just so silly. We gotta they gotta be reducing some comedy skit. And then later on in the show, what happened? Oh my god, with the revival is even worse. But it, it, it's so silly, so corny. Like, really, no, I don't no one gives a fuck about this. And it's a kid show. It's a kid show. Again, WW Monday Night Raw is not a is not a wrestling fan show. It's a fucking kid show now. Right? It's a children's show. What do kids want to know about a man shaving another man's back? I'm just saying. It's so stupid. We then get Ms. TV with his special guest, the almighty Bobby Lashley. And here's the thing. When Miz came out in his ring gear, that was a dead giveaway. Oh my God, we're going to see Bobby Lashley and the fucking Miz one-on-one. God help us all. God help us all. And they have the segment. And... For some reason, Lashley now is speaking in third person, like I like I got demonstrated in the, re, in the beginning of the review. And yes, he's no longer with Leo Rush. We almost say this. I know people apparently there's some heat with Leo Rush right now, but God damn it, yo, Bobby Lashley in some way needs Leo Rush. I'm not saying he's the fucking answer, but by no means at all. But Lashley by himself is a dead man walking. There's no hope. There is no fucking hope. You at least put him with Leo Rush. Leo Rush is tolerable. He, he he's fucking tolerable. But him by himself, I don't give a fuck anymore. I don't give a shit. And they're they're talking about their accolade, their their their, their successes and shit like that back and forth. Kind of silly when you think about it. And then again, you go to the improv two match because again, there's a dead giveaway. They're both in their fucking ring gear, and they have the match. And it looks like the Miz is about to win. And then Shane McMahon interfered. He comes out. And now think about it. Oh, my God. I thought Shane was on SmackDown Live. You would think that, right? By watching SmackDown Live. And he comes out there. And he's he's distracting the Miz. And there's a moment where Shane O'Mac puts a, puts a picture up of Miz's dad on the Titantron. On the video screen, if you will. And Miz is distracted. It eventually Lashley won the match, hitting the spear. And then the two of them double teamed the Miz. And then the Miz got locked in that random weird ass choke that he hit Miz on at, at freaking um at Fastly a couple of months ago. We find out that, sh- that the Miz is challenging Shane McMahon to a cage match at Money in the Bank. This feud is still going on. God help us all. You know what? If you really want to make Shane McMahon the best in the world, like you're calling him and shit like that, here's an idea. Why not give him the WWE title? Why the fuck that at this point, right? I'm just saying. Just fucking saying. We get the Viking Raiders. I'm surprised they're still being called that right now. And they face the Lucha House Party. The Lucha House Party attacked the Raiders before the match. But the Raiders still won the match. It's funny because there's this thing that they did, right? Where, okay, I'm going to just call it Hanson and Rowe. I'm not going to call them Evar and Eric. I think it's stupid as shit. Let's call them Hanson and Rowe. Where Hanson, like he jumped on the middle rope and did like a freaking, um, like he did like a Shining Woods or something like that. After jumping off the second rope. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. But they won the match, obviously. They hit the Viking experience because the goddamn, we got to keep that name somehow, pal. Goddamn, pal. <laughs> goddamn, pal. 
Gotta keep that name there, pal. Ha <laughs> ha, the Viking experience. Yeah, pal, I love it. They kept the name in some ways, so there you go. And there's that. I mean, again, you're giving these guys the momentum. It's only a matter of time until they are going to be challenging for the tag titles, I'll say, on Monday Night Raw. But it's funny because on NXT, they're still being called the War Raiders. They have merch as the War Raiders. I think it's silly, but hey, what can you do? We had the moment of bliss where Alexa Bliss was going to announce the women that are going to be part of the Raw for, for, for part of Raw for the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. So I'm sure that the other members of for, for the other members will be announced tonight on SmackDown. So you had first coming out with Natalia, and then out came and God help us all. Dana Brooke. Dana fucking Brooke. Hey, look. I'll get to that in just a sec. Because I want to run down the list of the women that were in this match. After that, you had Naomi come out. Former women's champion. So was Natalia in her own right. And then the last participant, everyone was expecting either Sasha Banks. Right? Because Sasha was in that fucking graphic. Right, pal? Or a Ruby Riot, Something like that. I remember, hashtag Ruby in the bank, yo. Oh, my God, man. Ruby in the bank, yo. If you will. But no. It was Alexa Bliss herself. Now, listen. Apparently, everyone and their fucking mother, all of a sudden, is a Dana Brooke fan. From what I'm seeing. Oh, it's good for Dana Brooke to be in this match. It's funny, though. It's funny because a while ago, nobody was saying shit about Dana Brooke. Everyone was fucking quiet. You hear Dana Brooke, you make a peep. And it's sad. It's the same Dana Brooke who can't even get a thousand retweets on a verified Twitter account that she has. But she's struggling to get a thousand retweets. But yet, he placed her in this match. I don't think she'll win the match. I'm fine with it by now. I'm over it, if, if you will. But basically, again, it's, it goes back to what I was saying. Instead of having these people earn the shit, I was just give it like a fucking handout. Like the government gives out food stamps and EBT cards and checks and government welfare checks, right? Just a handout to everybody. God damn, pal. Here you go. One for you, one for you, one for you. Uh, hey, you bitch. Here you go. That's what it is now. A fucking hand, a handout bullshit. Whatever happened to fucking earning it? Being put in a match and com competitive action. But that's no hero there right now. I'm pretty sure tonight on SmackDown, they'll announce the other remaining women. And I'll be damn, oh, they have a match. Because goddamn, why the fuck not, right? Imagine the men and the women have to wrestle to get spot. That'd be funny. He's up a raw. Oh, fuck it, whatever. It's like when they did the women's tag team chamber match to crown the first ever raw women's tag titles. The first ever women's tag titles. I'm sorry here. All the women on Raw had to like be in matches and shit, but the SmackDown side was qualified automatically. It's like the fucking pattern just changing shit all of a sudden. Imagine that. But in this whole thing as well, Naomi challenged Alexa Bliss to an improv to match. Um, so we had the match. Uh, Alexa Bliss's shoots kept coming untied during the match. She was wearing Chuck Taylors. AJ Lee would be fucking proud. I'm just saying. But you know what though? If she was wearing Vans, it would not be happening. I'm just saying. But the match was there. I didn't give a shit about it. It's like, I think they had a match on SmackDown a while ago where they were both on the blue brand. But it's a match, again, I didn't care for. Where Alexa eventually had to take off her shoes. And Naomi won with the legs, the, the split legged moonsault. So there you go with that. Like I said also earlier, the Miz will face Shane McMahon in a steel cage match at Money in the Bank. But goddamn, yo, I hate this fucking handout bullshit, yo. Hey, Dana, we know you're sitting and catering. You're about to go for your fourth plate of fucking pasta and chicken. We're not doing shit with you. Even though, yeah, you did beat Ruby Riot, God help us all. And you beat Tamina on main event. How do you get rewarded? Let's put you on the fucking ladder match. Even though Sam Roberts has been talking shit about you on Twitter or on commentary. The rain's on the wall, bro. And apparently I'm hearing, too, that apparently... They're gonna. They're, 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 they're talking about a fucking title run with her. God help us all. God help us all. And you know what? 
this is where sometimes you wish, hey, they will put a Sasha. But Sasha's probably on her way out. Or a, a Ruby Riot. Where the fuck was Ruby? Now, now, who's to say? Now, listen, dorks. Who's to say that on SmackDown tonight, Ruby Riot gets added to the match? Who knows? Much has happened. We'll have to wait and see. Hmm? Got the latest episode of the Firefly Funhouse. I love this shit. I'm sorry. I, I I'm starting to love it. I thought it was gold. I had my doubts, but you know what? I'm happy that they're still going the course. WWE not backing down. Fucking <laughs> the rambling rabbit. It's just fucking gold, okay? Um, Bray's painting a picture. It's basically a picture. I guess Sister Abigail in the burnt house. Remind me when Randy Orton burnt down the why a compound of the house years ago on the ro- on the road to WrestleMania 33, right? So there was the symbol, the symbolism there, I guess, right? Out came Rambling Rabbit, who wanted to see the drawing, and then out came Abby the Blair, Abby the Blair Witch, and I thought that was funny too, because Bray was like, "Yowie, wowie, yowie, wowie," yeah, bruh. Yowie wowie. And there's a moment like at the end where they're ending the thing and Bray's like, remember, wherever you start a firefly, I'll always be there to end it. You see that like that that manner his mannerism just changed there for a second. He was all happy. He got a little serious. And then he got back to happy again. So in a way, I di- I do dig it. I think it's cool. I think eventually though. He'll go back to being Bray Wyatt again. It's, it's a phase, right? But my only concern is that, hey, if he's going to have a match, he better not be losing. He better not be fucking losing. I'm just saying. Becky Lynch came out. The man Becky Lynch came out. The champ champ. Cut a promo about facing both Charlotte Flair and Lacey Evans in separate matches at Money in the Bank. Talking about her being the man and how she had to overcome adversity and take on everyone who has all challengers and shit like that how she gonna overcome the odds i'm sorry but i'm gonna just say this right now her problems will become corny to me i know for everyone else this is basically for the reaction of everyone's i get this is the reaction for everyone that listens to a becky lynch promise you're a becky diehard okay let me show you guys right now yeah becky yay woo wee woo yeah, Becky, 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 yeah, good promo, Becky, yeah, Becky, she's the man, you know, and she can be saying the same fucking shit every single fucking week, the same shit, but still, dorks on the internet, oh my god, Becky speaking, oh my god, Becky Lynch, good promo, yeah, even though it's the same shit over and over and over again. And then out came Lacey Evans, they had a brawl. Try to make it a big fucking deal, right? You had everyone come out, all the agents, referee, to separate these two women. I'm pretty sure tomorrow. I'm pretty sure tonight on SmackDown they'll do the same thing with Charlotte and Becky. But that was that. Yeah, I'll be real with you. I hope Becky drops one of the titles. I really, really do. That's just my honest opinion. We then had Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Defeating the revival, the crowd got a. Sh- the crowd literally started chanting at the revival, "Shave your back, shave your back." It's sad again. They've, they've been reduced to a comedy skit, and I really hope. I honest to God, I really hope that a. They do not accept that new deal by WWE. I hope they don't. But they, they Hawkins, Hawkins and Ryder. Got the win. Ryder pinned Scott Dawson with a crucifix. And there was that. We then got Rey Mysterio versus Samoa Joe. Backstage, Rey Mysterio did an interview talking about the match, how he let everyone down, but more importantly, his son Dominic. And here's the thing about it, okay? And I know my homie Perry said it on Twitter, and I th- I started dying when he said this shit. You know, if, and I, started, if I started laughing my ass off when I saw this tweet. I had a fucking cool tweet and shit like that. But yo, how is it that, and this is what he said on the tweet, okay? Keep this in mind. These are not my words, these are his words. And I started dying, okay? How is it that Ray Mysterio is allowed to bring his wife to work, but Leo Rush can't? I started dying my ass off laughing. Because essentially, listen, Dominic looks like a Butch Dyke. He does. He looks like a fucking Butch Dyke. He looks like he doesn't give a shit. 
for someone that wasn't be in the wrestling business oh my god look at he's dressed up all gucci'd up fucking swag fat glasses fucking diamond wrist and shit uh, it looks corny okay i don't know if he signed to the pc yet or whatever but you can just tell this kid doesn't give a shit And he dedicates the match to the son, to everyone, whatever. And they have the match. And what do you know? Samoa Joe, two weeks in a row, takes the L. The U.S. champ takes a fucking L. Champs are chumps, motherfuckers. I know Solomon Monster said that a while ago. Shot to the Solomon Monster. Solomon Monster sounds off. Champs are chumps, y'all. I'm just saying. Samoa Joe can't catch a break. God damn it, it's sad. It's fucking sad. We then go to the contract signing between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. And they're both, uh, they're in the ring, they're sitting on a desk. They talk about how this was supposed to ha- this is now finally happening after all these years. Styles goes on to say that, you know, a man will do, a- you know, he'll do anything at any cost, whatever. Hitting that, hey, he might turn on Seth Rollins. And how Ron then goes on to say that, hey, at least he beat Brock Lesnar and AJ couldn't do it. And they're talking back and forth. And eventually, Ron signs the contract. Stock goes to shake his hand. Ron puts up the title. I, I notice it now that yeah, the title is now has a Velcro strap, which I'm fine with. I know apparently they're doing that with all the titles now, apparently. Like if you watch NXT, they're starting to do that too with the NXT title, the tag titles, the Velcro strap and shit. I'm fine with it. It is what it is. Not a big deal to me. And then Stout goes on to attack Seth Rollins. And they're, they had like a little brawl, but eventually Style hit the phenomenal forearm onto the announce table, on Seth, onto the table on the Rollins, and that's how they closed the show. Now, I did say earlier that you have, the, you have Gallows and Anderson on Monday Night Raw. If they're smart, why not put them back with Styles? Reform the club. Reform the club. Why the fuck not? I think that will be a good direction to go. But again, this Raw was just pure fucking laziness by WWE. It really, really was. And you only wonder now, what will they do next? Tonight's SmackDown Live. Will they also get a free pass? Hey, Andrade, you get a free pass. Hey, um... Who's on, who's on Smack? Who lost on Monday Night Raw? Uh, Buddy Murphy, you get a free pass. Oh, hey, you, um, freaking um, Rusev Dead, you get a free pass. Hey, Lana, you get a free pass. Why the fuck? Hey, Zelina, you get a free pass. Hey, Alistair, you get a free pass. You're all in the match. I hope not, but whatever. Um, guys, give me your thoughts in the comments below, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw, if you enjoy the show or not. I welcome your feedback. You can follow me on Twitter at Heel Steven. Uh, for all my Impact diehards out there, yes, this past Sunday, we did a review of Rebellion on the YouTube channel. Rebellion. We did a chat. We did a review on that on Around the Point. We gave our thoughts on what was Rebellion. And if you've not checked that out, go give it a watch. We're almost at 1,000 views on that, which is great. Awesome. Put a smile on my face, if you will. But like I said before, guys, I welcome your feedback. Follow me on Twitter at Heel Steven. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. And whatever you do, don't be a hashtag activist. It gets you nowhere. Just saying. And as always, guys, hate, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back later on tonight for the SmackDown review. With that being said, y'all, I am out like Janet's titties. Peace out, dorks.